and congregation. Remain standing for our call portion. Good morning. People of God, run to our welcome in God. Holy oh, Lord, in their past People of God, proclaim our love for the God of love. Who is one? 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 Who is
Father's Day, we're thinking about um, all of the, the good things that our fathers or people who have been in our lives and have been father figures have done for us. What, what are some things that you can think about on this Father's Day? Um, well, he always cheers me up when I'm sad or okay. yeah. That's something good. Well, in our Bible story today, we are talking about Abraham. Now, Abraham is one of, a father to the Christian faith. He's the first father in Scripture that we talk about. Now, and it's also the father of Judaism and Islam as well. We'll talk about that some other time. Um, in this story, three visitors come to visit Abraham, and they are strangers. And Abraham gives them, shows them uh, kindness, hospitality. They are nice to them. Uh, they provide them food and all the things that they need. <laughs> and so during this time of where Abraham is showing hospitality to these three visitors, hospitality just means you know, giving them food and helping them out as they're going along their journey. It turns out that one of those three visitors, or maybe all the three visitors, the story is not really specific, is God. Think about that. God shows up to Abraham as they are being hospitable towards them, sharing food with them, a meal. And he tells them about a promise that God will do for them. So the moral of the story is that when we do things for other people, even strangers, we could be doing something for God and may not even know it. And so that's why we should always treat people as we would want to be treated. You've heard that before, right? The golden rule, treat people as you want to be treated. Let's say a little prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask that you always help us to treat all people, even the strangers in our midst, with the same love and care that we extend towards you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There you go. She doesn't want to do anything about that. Okay. Thank you.
focus for this morning's message is from Genesis, chapter 18, verses 1 through 15, and chapter 21, verses 1 through 7. This is from the Message Bible. God appeared to Abraham at the oaks of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance of his tent. It was the hottest part of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing. He ran from his tent to greet them and bow before them. He said, Master, if it please you, stop for a while with your servant. I'll get some water so you can wash your feet. Rest under this tree. I'll get some food to refresh you on your way, since your travels have brought you across my path. They said, Certainly, go ahead. Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. He said, Hurry, get three cups of our best flour, knead it, and make bread. Then Abraham ran to the cattle pen and picked out a nice plump calf and gave it to the servant, who lost no time getting it ready. Then he got curds and milk, brought them with the calf that had been roasted, set the meal before the men, and stood there under the tree while they ate. The men said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? He said, In the tent. One of them said, I'm coming back about this time next year. When I arrive, your wife Sarah will have a son. Sarah was listening at the tent opening just behind the man. Abraham and Sarah were old by this time, very old. Sarah was far past the age of having babies. Sarah laughed within herself, an old woman like me? Get pregnant with this old man of a husband? God said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh saying me have a baby, an old woman like me? Is anything too hard for God? I'll be back about this time next year and Sarah will have a baby. Sarah lied. She said, I didn't laugh because she was afraid. But he said, yes, you did. You laughed. God visited Sarah exactly as he said he would. God did to Sarah what he promised. Sarah became pregnant and gave Abraham a son in his old age. And at the very time God had said, Abraham named him Isaac. When his son was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him just as God had commanded. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born. Sarah said, God has blessed me with laughter, and all who get the news will laugh with me. She also said, whoever would have suggested to Abraham that Sarah would one day nurse a baby, yet here I am, I have given the old man a son. Here is the reading of Holy Scripture. Let us pray together. Eternal God, in the reading of the Scriptures, may your word be heard. In the meditations of our hearts, may your word be known. And in the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be shown. Amen. This morning we are continuing our current message series, God's Creative Connection. And I know we stopped it for a little bit when I was on vacation, so I thought I'd give you a little bit of a recap. Uh, during the series, we've been looking at some of the ways that God has creatively connected with humanity to fulfill the mission of God. We began on Pentecost where God creatively uses language to connect with people from other cultures. Today we are looking at creative hospitality and the story of these three divine visitors who come to visit Abraham and Sarah in their tent while they are on that journey, their journey. The icon picture, oh, here's no icon, uh, there is a picture of the three visitors. Um, I have it in my office. I can show it to you after the service. But they are sitting around the table, and there is a chalice in the opening in the picture. And so the picture suggests that you are welcome to come down and sit down and feast and have this meal along with these three angels, divine beings that have come to 
visit the Abraham. It's one of the most uh, popular icons, uh, artistic depictions of this event that has happened in Scripture. Uh, there's one at the Greek Orthodox Church uh, here in town. Can you think of a time in your own life where you have experienced the presence of God while sharing hospitality with another? Hospitality is a big deal in the Bible. In the Old Testament, Leviticus says 19 commands the Israelites to love the stranger because Israel was also once a stranger in the land of Egypt. So a stranger in Hebrew can also be interpreted as guest, foreigner, and immigrant. The Gospel of Matthew takes this a step further, and Jesus, uh, in the parable of the sheep and the goats, says that how you treat the stranger is in effect how you treat God. So if you're inhospitable to the stranger, you are being inhospitable towards God. He says this in Matthew 25. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you not, did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then you will answer, and truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Now, the next chapter of Genesis, after this encounter of Abraham with the three angels, is the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. So Genesis sets up these two stories as a comparison and contrast. Now, this is how you should show hospitality. And this is inhospitality, the, the wrong way of doing it. And Ezekiel identifies the sin of Sodom as that of being inhospitable. Ezekiel puts it this way. This was the guilt of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters had pride, excessive food, and prosperous ease, but did not aid the poor and needy. So these three men appear to Abraham. Abraham treats them with hospitality giving them water so they can wash their feet. He invites them to rest under a tree while he gets them food for their journey. Abraham then runs to Sarah and lets her know about everything he needs for the three men who are passing through. Abraham brings the meal to these three men and then watches them eat. One of the three men tells Abraham that when they come back next year, Sarah will have a baby. Now Sarah overhears this inside of the tent and can't help but laugh. So when God first called Abraham to leave his homeland for a land that God would show him, Abraham was 75 years old. When God tells him about the promise that he will be a father of all nations, Abraham is 99 years old. Now Sarah was 90 when she gave birth to Isaac. So maybe we can understand the laughter, how improbable all this really seems to be. God doesn't judge her, though, for her doubt. He simply just asks her the question, that theological question that I'm sure we all ponder. Is anything impossible for God? Is anything too hard for God? Now, Abraham and Sarah both experienced the presence of God in this divine encounter of hospitality. They experience God when they provide hospitality to these three strangers who they've never met before. They treat them as being their honored guests. The culture of the Bible comes from the Near East. And if there is one thing the Near East is known for, even to this day, it is hospitality. I have never been there, but everything that I've read about the Near East and people that I've talked to that have visited the Near East say it is true. When you go to a home of a person in the Near East, they literally treat you like you're an incarnation of the divine. When we have visitors 
who come to visit our church for the same time. The question that we should always be asking ourselves is that, are we extending the same kind of hospitality toward them that Abraham and Sarah extended towards these three strangers? George Fox, the founder of the Quaker tradition, says, Walk joyfully on the earth and respond to that of God in every human being. In her book, An Altar in the World, Barbara Brown Taylor tells a story from the Desert Fathers about a monk that lived all alone who decided to undertake a 70-week fast, eating only once. He was undertaking this fast so that he could be more receptive to God. When he was little more than just bones, he asked God to tell him what the meaning of a certain Bible passage was. But God would not. Disappointed in the results of his fast, the monk decides to go ask one of his brothers in the monastery what the meaning of the Bible passage might be. It is at this moment that an angel of God appears to the monk and says to him, Your 70-week fast did not bring you one step closer to God. But now that you have humbled yourself enough to go to your brother, God has sent me to you to reveal to you the meaning of this Bible passage. Bass writes that the, what the monks, the, the monks, while they live alone in solitude, they work really hard to stay connected to one another as a community. They do this because they want to resist the temptation of believing in their own self-sufficiency. There are many stories right here in our own backyard of God being revealed through this same kind of divine hospitality that was revealed to Abraham and Sarah that they experienced. Here recently, just this week, I showed Mom and Mark the Sioux City Museum and we heard all those stories of when Flight 242 went down and all of the people here crashed. All of the people here in Sioux City opened up their homes to complete strangers, college campuses. Briar Cliff was one of them that allowed the victims to stay there. Some other examples is when we share our building with other community groups, that is a ministry. We are doing a ministry of hospitality. Calico Kids, AA, NA, the City Elite Dance School, the Girl Scouts, the Chiquis Congregation, and the Bereavement Group. Our gay pride service who welcomed others who were different than us. These are all ministries of hospitality where we are enacting the same thing that Abraham and Sarah did for the three strangers. The welcome that you first gave me when I first came here to be your pastor, meeting me at the parsonage, helping me unload everything and providing me with a meal that I would come to know as loose meats or taverns. I didn't know that at the time, all I knew was uh, sloppy chips. <laughs> Christmas Eve, you know, a lot of times I don't get a chance to see my family because on Christmas Eve I'm serving two different congregations, but a number of members have opened up their home to me so where I could go and share Christmas Eve meals with them. Since I, uh, my family, well, one part of my family is in Wisconsin and the other part's in Missouri. And while I was on vacation, I also had the opportunity of watching a movie I hadn't seen. I, it was on my to-do list. I just never got around to it. It was called The Man Called Otto by Tom Hanks. And in this movie, Otto is frustrated with his life. His wife has passed away. He has been forced to retire from his job in the housing complex where he used to be a part of the homeowners association is not what it used to be. He's always fighting with a real estate company called Die in America. He jokingly calls it Die America. Um, he's fighting with them because they're trying to buy up all the houses in his neighborhood to tear them down and turn into condos. So he doesn't want that to happen. In the movie, Otto does his rounds around his neighborhood like a beautiful watchman, making sure everyone's following the rules of the neighborhood. Due to all these changes, though, that he's been experiencing in his life, he has decided that he will commit suicide. 
A funny thing happens, though. Each time that he tries to make the attempt, someone from the neighborhood interrupts him, trying to make a connection with him. The first person to interrupt him is a new immigrant family that has just recently moved in across the street. An unlikely friendship develops with this family throughout the movie. The next person that interrupts him is a young man in the neighborhood who used to be a student of his former wife that had passed away, who had been kicked out of the house because he was transgender and needed a night to stay, place to stay. And lastly, Otto develops an unlikely relationship with a stray cat that he initially can't stand but develops a love for. Otto discovers through each of these people and animals who can interrupt his suicide attempts, he connects with them. And he, through them and the experiences they share together, he wants to live. And he inevitably creates a new family that cares for and loves him. Through these relationships, Otto discovers a new life that he did not know was even possible. The meaning of all these stories is the same as our story from Genesis, which is that God is found in these connections we make with other human beings made in the image of God. We all bear the divine image of God, even complete strangers. God works in through all of humanity, and you never know when God might come to you for a visit. So how you treat other people really matters, especially those outsiders who may be unfamiliar to us, the foreigner, the immigrant. I'm sure we can make a whole list. The relationships we have with others, the hospitality that we demonstrate toward other people connects us with the divine. That's the main point. We need each other. And it is in these moments of bonding that we discover the presence of God. Amen.
we have received. Okay, let me back up a little bit. Let's get back to vacation. This is a time of prayer uh, where we share our joys and concerns. We have microphones. Uh, raise your hand and okay. So this is joys and concerns, birthdays, anniversaries. And my currently playing out some birthdays and anniversaries. I just talked to my mom on the phone and they're on their way home from camping. My grandma couldn't make it this morning. She wasn't feeling good. Their doctor put her on different days and I want everyone to pray for them to get home safe. Yes. We all say together, Lord, hear our prayers. Is there a birthday coming up? I thought it Oh, the guard celebrated. Okay. So it'll be next week. We can talk about that. Okay. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day that you have made. Lord, we pray that your presence would be with us as we journey in this season after Pentecost during the summertime. Lord, we pray that you would empower us to demonstrate the same kind of hospitality that Abraham and Sarah did to those three divine strangers. 
one of them was you, or maybe all of them were you. Lord, always help us to see your full reflection and presence in others, and that how we treat people is a reflection of our love for you. Lord, we left up to you this day all of the prayer requests that were spoken and not spoken. Lord, we ask that you be with families that are traveling and are visiting relatives, that they may have safe travels. Lord, we thank you for the rain. It's already been an improvement since last year. We need the rain badly. Lord, we thank you for all of the gifts that you have given us. Help us to always be mindful of those gifts and how to use them wisely. We lift up all of these things to you in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray by boldly saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power,
doubting in our lives. Your generosity knows no limits. Your love and compassion pours into our hearts and every being. We thank you. We call upon you, trusting your love. We offer you all that we have and all that we are, hoping for your glory and desiring your kingdom. Amen. Time for announcements. The announcements are on the back of the bulletin. We have some things to share. Um, food share or anything about community in the community? Or, go, go ahead with whatever you're going to share. <laughs> it, it's a result of the food share. Okay. We have one of um, half of a case of eggs that were left over, and their expiration date is in June. So I'm going to bring that box up, and anybody that can use a dozen eggs, please take them. Well, there you go, Paul. Mark likes eggs, doesn't he? <laughs> doesn't he want a dozen eggs? The prime moment. Where did Mark go? Oh, it's a bit after. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, now we have a drawing. Go ahead and draw that down. Draw that down. Yeah, yeah well, I'm going to um, say a few words about this. Um, you know, being in the community, um, one thing that we had is we had um, an Afghan blanket that was made by one of our church members, Dorothy. Yeah. So we had um, quite a few people actually um, enter the free wrap that was completely free. We had a blanket there um, for display. So now we're going to have um, Jesse. Okay. Make, uh, Let's see, shake it up a little bit, see who's going to let us. Alright, let's see here. Nikki. Yeah, just Crystal. Oh, just Nikki. I can't pronounce the last name anyway. So yeah, we'll save this and then we'll contact that. Um, okay. Person, um, sometime today, probably. So, um, a little more about you and the community. It was just a really positive event where um, community leaders had several people show up with booths and people walked around and explored the booths. Um, Mayflower had a booth with um, information about the church with um, free water, suckers, and um, a beat activity. So, it was a good time. Had a lot of positive connections, I thought. Great. We had a lot of people come by and say they heard of us and they were really impressed on the work that we do with the community. Oh, Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hospitality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not really a whole lot back here. Is there? There's the trustees meeting Wednesday, June 21st at 6 p.m. There's a deacon's meeting too, isn't there? No. Oh, the deacon's meeting is the week after. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I just got back on vacation, so. <laughs> we do also have um, a cake um, for the um, cooking coffee time to celebrate Father's Day. So yes, yes. For, uh, I decided a confirmation in the baptism and why before I came here and had to there as well. <laughs> Go ahead, Bob. Could we thank the, the good uh, people that were there yesterday and not yes. really the community? Yes, yeah, sure. yeah, Tad and Ty and yeah. Linda are the ones. Freddie and Robert. Freddie and Robert, okay. Mm -hmm. Have an announcement. Yeah, go ahead. Can we remind people about next Sunday? Oh yes. Uh, okay. Next Sunday, uh, where our service will be outside. You won't have to go very far. It'll just be outside on our front lawn. And so bring your lawn chairs. And uh, will we cook an out too? We're gonna have, have hot dogs, chips, and a drink. We're gonna have hot dogs, chips, and a drink. Um, so if you want, invite a friend and. We're going to come and worship together 
are outside of the front lawn that have chips, hot dogs, and a drink. We are going to set up a couple canopies, too. So. We'll set up some canopies to block the sun. I got some free eggs for you, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be outside if the weather permits. To do if that. the weather permits, you know, if it rains, we don't have to go very far since it's just right out of the lawn. Any other announcements? All righty then. Uh, please stand if you're comfortable doing so. For our civic song. Oh, go ahead, Jay. Gary is having two surgeries. Yes. We will keep him in our prayers for sure. Lord, hear our prayers. We've been joined now together in our spending song. We ask, Who is my neighbor? Number 541. Sign of God's love for all people.